All right, everybody, we are going to get started here in just a moment. Let me go ahead and make sure that we have everything working, including our audio, right, everybody, we are going to get which we do. So again, I uh, apologize like last night for the terrible audio and the poor lighting. Uh, I'm waiting for Nikki here to enter the room again. So right now I have, uh, I have Olivia with me here. And I see our stream graphics are not working quite, quite right. I wonder why that is. Uh, hang on one second here, guys. Let me try to fix that. One second to troubleshoot this since we're a minute early. There we go. Graphics pop back on. Excellent. Uh, so I have Lily with me here. I'll actually move the uh, chat or the box up a little bit. Uh, so I'm waiting on Nikki to come back here, and she is going to take Lily for me. Chat with her. But good afternoon, everybody. We've got a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, probably going to be starting a storm chase here pretty soon. Uh, I want to talk about the current weather situation right now because we've got some ongoing storms. And then I want to talk about some plans and I want to go outside and uh, uh, do some questions and answers. I know a lot of people ask about the car, things like that. So uh, if you have questions and answers, just hang on because uh, it's going to take me a minute. Otherwise, I'll lose them in the chat. Uh, so go ahead. I want to talk first about the uh, current situation that we have. Uh, if we go ahead and look at the overall radar picture here, and I will check the chat and to interact with your comments here momentarily, but just give me a minute here. Uh, currently, uh, if you look over here in the desert southwest, we've got several flash flood warnings in effect. Uh, we're going to be touching on that. We've also, for our Canadian friends uh, up there, up north, as you will, uh, north of the Arrowhead of Minnesota. Whoops. Good lord, what is going on? Hang on. Technical difficulties here. There we go. A couple of Canadian severe thunderstorm warnings there even. Uh, those appear to be surrounded by some flash flood or some rainfall warnings. A couple of severe thunderstorm warnings also between Regina and Esteban. A special weather statement in northern Utah. And then this small cluster of strong thunderstorms between Denver and uh, Deadwood, South Dakota. And then we've got some generalized rain showers here over uh, portions of the mid-Atlantic. Uh, so first, oh, I see what my problem is. Hang on, guys. Sorry, I've got the dual monitor set up, and I'm clicking on the wrong monitor. So first, I want to zoom in to the state of Arizona, and you can see flash flood warning after flash flood warning here. Uh, just a ton of them. All these green boxes here are flash flood warnings. In fact, we've even got a special weather statement for a strong thunderstorm in portions of California as well. And if we go ahead down here and actually change the product on Radar Omega to the, hang on here, I gotta get rid of my head to be able to see, oh no I don't, to the, uh, let's see here, let's go the six hour accumulated precipitation. Uh, this is showing us areas where a lot of rain has fallen. So we've got uh, let's see here, roughly about two inches or so of rain in the past couple of hours over some of these areas. Uh, these are some already saturated um, areas, so it doesn't take a whole lot of rain to cause flash flooding. What are you doing, little girl? Uh, we've also got a severe thunderstorm warning that just popped up down here near Buckeye, and uh, that's a severe thunderstorm warning for the next 27 minutes. That's for Maricopa. Uh, county until 6 p.m. mountain time and 60 mile per hour winds are associated with that storm. Here you can have her. Say goodnight, Lily. Okay, bye. <laughs> She's cute. Uh, so Arizona is pretty active. We've got a uh, more intense cluster of storms as well here near Denver, between Denver and Fort Morgan, as well down there between Lyman. I love chasing in this area. It's nice and flat. Weld County area out there. Beautiful chase terrain. And we're going to be talking about uh, storm chasing here in just a minute. A couple of flash flood warnings also 
uh, on the western slope of the Rocky Mountains as well, west of Glenwood Springs, but not quite to Grand Junction. Here's that special weather statement near Logan up here in northern Utah. That's just a strong thunderstorm, nothing severe, but some gusty winds, maybe some small hail. Lots of rain here in southeastern Wyoming. And I am brushing over this pretty quickly, guys, uh, but uh, I just want to give everybody a quick overview. I'm going to put this in motion here. We've got a broken line of some scattered thunderstorms stretching from the Denver area all the way up toward Highway 18 uh, near Deadwood, South Dakota, roughly. Uh, a couple of special weather statements here indicated by the blue boxes, which is basically uh, just indicating a strong thunderstorm, not necessarily anything severe, uh, as well as a new pop-up storm here that's uh, up here in northeast Nebraska near O'Neill that does appear to be growing in intensity quite rapidly. Uh, so if you're northeast of O'Neill, you've got a strong thunderstorm that's going to be approaching as well. Uh, we better not forget our Canadian friends up here. We've got these severe thunderstorm warnings north of Estevan near Weyburn. And these are severe thunderstorm warnings issued by Environment Canada. Uh, meteorologists are tracking thunderstorms capable of producing very strong dust up to, up to golf ball size hail and heavy rain. Uh, let's see here. We've also got a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings. And I believe that these are actually heavy rainfall warnings, if I remember. Yeah, it's just a, it's not a flood warning. It's a rainfall warning. 40 to 60 millimeters of rain possible this evening in these green boxes. And then these severe thunderstorm warnings right here, just across the border into Canada. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom into our friends down here in South Texas, where we've got a couple of special marine warnings in effect here for Corpus Christi. These are in effect for the next 20 minutes or so. These are coastal waters from Baffin Bay to Port Aransas and Baffin Bay to Porter and the actual open waters. So we're out to about 60 miles from the coast here. This is warned until 8 p.m. Central Time, so about another 24 minutes. These are thunderstorms that are capable of water spouts. Water spouts possible with these thunderstorms. I'm actually going to put this in motion. This is our potential tropical depression that we were watching the other night. And you can see we've got quite a bit of spin in this. If this thing would have stayed over open waters for a couple of more maybe 12 to 24 hours. We could have been looking at a depression, maybe even a tropical storm. But you can see right here where I'm highlighting the spin, we've got the center of circulation. It looks to be right about there. Uh, that's the low pressure center. And that is definitely a cyclone. So if this would have been over open waters for a little bit longer, uh, we definitely could have been looking at a weak tropical storm maybe. Uh, but that is bringing some much needed rainfall to South Texas. And we've also got a couple of scattered strong thunderstorms here for our East Kentucky friends. It looks like these might be over, let's see, we've got, don't need them over these flash flooded areas. Folks, this is right here north of Hazard is exactly where we were assisting with the flash flood efforts. Uh, in fact, I can highlight it. Uh, it was right here that I'm circling. That's where most of our base of operations and some of the worst flash flooding took place was on Highway 15 there, just north of Hazard, right in that bend right there at the Breathitt County line. And as you can see, those storms are dumping some rainfall there, but the good news is these storms are moving quickly. So I'm not expecting too much of a flash flood concern with those. No flash flood warnings in effect or anything like that. Uh, special weather statements are in effect uh, for strong wind gusts, it looks like. And uh, this line of storms extends from Prestonburg, or Prestonsburg rather, all the way down to Hazard. And those are going to approach uh, uh, areas here uh, from Pikeville all the way down to Blackie in the next probably hour or so before they either weaken or move out of the area into portions of West Virginia. Okay, so that's all I have right now. Let me check the chat here and make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, we're going to go over some severe weather chasing, some storm chasing plans here, and uh, then we're going to go outside and we're going to do some questions and answers. Lots of people in here. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we do have our website active. In fact, I probably should do a little bit of promotion for that. Guys, we have our website live here. Uh, just trying to plug the merch store a little bit because we've had some people working really hard on it. We've had lots of orders come in, so thank you for the support. If you want to support live storm chasing, you can send a super chat, use the PayPal button, or you can purchase an item from our store. So if you go up here and click on Shop Our Store, uh, we've got some of our favorite items on the homepage here. We've got stickers, we've got uh, Kentucky items here for the Kentucky floods, uh, lots of different shirts, 
lots of different sweatshirts. We've got these cool warning polygon shirts. So if uh, you want a unique piece of clothing, uh, why would you not want to wear a shirt that says hurricane warning on it? I mean, come on, how many people will have a shirt with that on it? I mean, you're not going to find that over on Holicity. Uh, we sell some of our favorite photos on there as well and stuff, uh, stuff for kids, phone cases, cups, mugs, all that stuff. So if you want something unique, uh, you're welcome to uh, check out our store. And uh, those are all very unique items until somebody steals the idea and rips a bunch of them off. I'll give it a week. Uh, I want to go ahead here and queue up the Storm Prediction Center website. Maybe. Okay, so here we're going to take a look at the uh, convective outlook for tomorrow. Now, this is uh, the uh, the chance or the probability for severe thunderstorms. Uh, you can see here we've got a large green area, nice shape there. Uh, that is a marginal risk for severe storms all the way from from the Canadian border down toward Colby, Kansas, Pueblo, Colorado, and extends as far east as Omaha and Lincoln. And then we've got another area, the marginal risk for storms near Columbus, all the way up to Roanoke. So I'm gonna actually put something in the chat here, guys, and you need to vote because we're gonna be storm chasing tomorrow, maybe, unless, unless new model data comes in and tells me not to. But we're gonna look at some of the models in a minute, but I want to know, do you guys want to go chase in uh, northeast Colorado, maybe near North Platte, Denver area? Or do we want to go down here into the southeast and chase from Atlanta up to the Charlotte area? So I'm going to put a poll in uh, in the chat here. And, and before, before everybody gets too crazy and votes, uh, I'm actually going to hold off on that because I want to explain to you day three. Now this is just a marginal risk. This is a pretty low risk for severe weather, but there is a chance at some photogenic storms, especially in the plains. Day three, which is Tuesday, we've got this marginal risk from Wichita all the way down to like the Fort Smith, Arkansas area. That's pretty tough chasing terrain once you get into north east, or northwest Arkansas. Uh, but this area from Tulsa to Wichita is chaseable. I haven't looked at that too much on the models, but the reason that I'm favoring going out west uh, toward like McCook is because that would give us not one but two shots at maybe some storm chasing here. But we're going to look at models and decide together. Um, let's see here. Day three, I don't think we've got anything for day, you know, or day four through eight, we don't have anything. So we need to uh, make a plan here. The reason that we're going to go out and chase these ghost storms, if you will, that might not even exist, is because we have to go out and do something. We haven't done a live stream for, uh, of a storm chase for like 14 days. And even if it's not a severe storm, we could have a really pretty photogenic storm out there. So let me go ahead and drop that poll in the chat, and then we're going to talk through it and come up with a discussion together. Hang on, I'm typing it in right now. Okay, so I have placed the poll in the chat. So vote for your uh, favorite option there. So we're actually going to go to a website called Pivotal Weather. Uh, you can actually access these graphics in the Radar Omega app. Um, however, uh, this computer is not uh, handling all everything I'm doing right now. It's lagging. Uh, the graphics card is really bogged down. I'm actually uh, exporting a very large video in Premiere Pro right now, so I'm using every bit of this computer that I can. And Omega uses just a little bit more uh, graphics processing here, I believe, than uh, the web browser does. So we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to look at the HRRR, and we're going to cheat. We're not going to look at any of the severe weather ingredients or really dive into the, uh, the technicalities, but what I do want to look at tomorrow is the composite reflectivity. Normally I'm not a big fan of this, but this is a, a, a thought or a hypothesis that the model has of what the radar screen might actually look like at a given time. So instead of looking at photographs, soundings, and all the technicalities that you guys probably have no idea what I'm talking about and are bored with and don't want to see, we're actually just going to look at something real simple here, uh, which makes the most sense to me. So we're going to start off here. 
Uh, and uh, this is uh, tonight, so we're going to go through tomorrow, and I'm going to call out the times here. This is about 3 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. You can see we've got some scattered shower development back over the Rockies and maybe some stratiform rain out here ahead of uh, some sort of front or a feature. As we peg through or page through uh, till about, let's see here, this is about 7 p.m. Central Time. You can see we've got kind of an elevated cluster of storms uh, ongoing back here east of Denver. Uh, maybe some pop-up ones out here uh, toward in the front range here up toward the Kansas Colorado border and then we've got this broken line of semi-scattered strong showers that's approaching uh, the central Kansas nothing too much to write home about as we approach 8 o'clock 9 o'clock 10 o'clock p.m. we've got a probably elevated cluster of storms here and then another one up here but this one is, has our interest back here in East Colorado West Kansas and as we page through the night that just becomes elevated and eventually dissipates and then we get a new cluster of elevated storms to form the next morning so now that we've looked at that, I want to go ahead and look at the southeast. Now, models aren't everything, um, so obviously take this with a grain of salt. Uh, let's see here. We're going to page through. This is tomorrow. We're looking at tomorrow right now at about 2 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern. And you can see there, watch Western North Carolina. We've got a, a cluster of some storms starting to develop. That could be a target area as well. And as we move toward uh, 4 p.m., we've actually got a, a semi-mature, maybe elevated cluster, maybe surface-based, I don't know, multi-cell cluster of storms uh, sweeping across South Carolina. And then later on, about 7 p.m., we actually have some storms uh, developing back there uh, in uh, the west or east, I guess east central, northeast Alabama. Uh, region right along the interstate there it looks like and then eventually dissipating and moving out overnight so right now I'm kind of leaning toward going west uh, I think that we're going to head off west uh, tomorrow morning toward parts of Kansas I think that's going to be the safest option so you're probably thinking why in the hell is this idiot sitting in Wisconsin if he needs to be in Kansas tomorrow well here's the reason so if I wake up, if I go to bed here shortly and I get up at about 2 o'clock a.m. Central, I've got a 10-hour drive to the target area out west tomorrow. In fact, I'll even pull this up on the map and we're going to talk you through this. So you're going to get an inside look at uh, basically the process of chasing a storm from beginning to end here. So if we do end up chasing tomorrow and you've been on this live stream here, uh, you're going to basically see the entire process. So if I go ahead here and I'm thinking a good target area would be Ogallala. Ogallala. Yeah, that one. Uh, Let's just say we end up going toward Ogallala. No, that's not it, Nebraska. So typically what I do before I need to make a road trip for a storm chase, I'll go into Google Maps and then I'll put in, you know, my hometown or my location, 53566. And this is going to give us a route to the, a, a relative area in the target area tomorrow. So we're actually looking at a 10 hour and 47 minute drive, 11 and a half hours if we take the scenic route, which I don't recommend, that route sucks. It's literally one highway the whole way. Uh, so if we go through Des Moines, Omaha, we can get to Ogallala, which would probably be in the middle of that target area. Um, oh, God, by what? Um, well, let's do this. Let's say we want to uh, arrive by... Let's say we want to get there by 4.30 p.m. tomorrow. I'll actually use the Google Maps tool here. And this tells me I need to leave by 5.45 a.m. 5.45 a.m. And I like to be a little bit early to the party. So if I actually got rolling at about 3 o'clock in the morning, we would have plenty of time. Now I want to go ahead and let's say we have to go a little bit farther southwest. Let's say we need to get down here to Wakini. That actually takes me a different route, doesn't it? Interesting. That's weird. Hmm. Okay. So we're still looking at about this. So we're looking at about a ten and a half hour drive. So this is totally doable. Uh, on the flip side, if we actually want to go and take a trip to the southeast, it's a little bit more brutal. It's not so bad. Let's say we got to go to Charlotte. Looking at a twelve and a half hour drive. So that wants to have me leave by. Doesn't even tell me. Whatever. So I would still need to leave at about the same. If I get going by about three o'clock in the morning, we're going to be fine. We're going to make make any of these on time so with that said vote for your your option i'm thinking that west is the best 
the best deal here. What is this guy doing? So I'm actually going to get ready here, folks, and uh, go get my streaming backpack. We're going to take a short intermission, and then we're going to go outside. And if you have any questions, I'll go ahead and answer them. Uh, but I want to give you guys a little bit of an overview. We're not really going to be building uh, the 360 mount tonight like I had planned because I wasn't able to get the parts I needed today. Uh, so I am going to uh, go outside and uh, we may end up uh, going to the gas station. I don't know. We'll do something. We'll drive around. But I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an inside look at uh, what I think about uh, the night before a storm chase. So give me one moment here. I'm going to put up Radar Omega, the loop, and I'm going to go get my streaming backpack. And I'll actually show you my streaming backpack and uh, we'll, get that, uh, we'll get that going here. Whoops. Alright, so I'm actually going to expand my uh, camera here just a little bit. Uh, this is the $5,000 bag, uh, and I don't brag to uh, be snotty or anything, but this thing is uh, roughly about $5,000 with the research and development involved with it and the equipment. Uh, this thing is how we get the most reliable live stream in the industry. Um, I'm not trying to knock other storm chasers, but I have not found anyone yet that matches this level of reliability. Um, Brett Adair, a friend of mine, I think he comes pretty darn close. Um, but the reason that I built this and put the big investment into this is because I need this to work. My entire business literally revolves around uh, live storm chasing. So we need to have a way to storm chase live and uh, reliably. Gosh darn it. Let me uh, remove or move my chat window here. So typically uh, what I do, I charge this up. This is a 50,000 milliamp hour battery and it's a massive battery that actually outputs 12 volts. Um, and I've got several of these packs. So we can actually run this, this unit here with no AC power for about 12 hours straight. Uh, so inside my pack, I've got several modems. Uh, my favorite modems are the Insego 5G routers here. Uh, these are all run off of USB. Uh, they're actually powered by the LiveView and they are giving a direct USB connection to the live view. A lot of people bond their live views with cell phone hotspots. Guys, that's, no, it, it doesn't work. The only way to do a live view is to do the live view data plan with an actual business plan because it gives priority. You don't have throttling or anything. So what I have with these services, the SIM cards that I purchased that I pay almost $1,000 a month for, uh, these give me priority access to Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. Uh, so we actually have priority and it's, it's a business plan and it's prioritized. So for example, if there's a lot of people on one cell phone tower, uh, the network will slow down, but this will basically put us to the front of the line. It's like budging in the line at Walmart, um, you know, to, to get service quicker. So this actually gives us priority, uh, which is it's awesome. These are excellent little routers. They're about 400 bucks a piece. Um, my second favorite router is definitely the Netgear Nighthawk, which I can't really show you because that lives over here. It has to stay outside, it gets kind of hot. Um, but that's my second favorite. That's a GSM router. Uh, Verizon is CDMA uh, for the services that aren't LTE. Uh, so I need to have a little bit different unit. Uh, I also run uh, run a couple of these in the car. But uh, this is one of my, my favorite routers. And uh, everything's Velcroed here. So inside my backpack, this is a modified uh, camera bag. Everything's Velcroed in place. And uh, the bottom there, that was the... Uh, the massive battery here. Hang on, I accidentally when I picked that up, I have to get uh, Basically, I cut this backpack open and punched a bunch of holes in it, and that allowed me to uh, run my wires everywhere. So I can zip this all up, and I have a fully self-contained unit. Uh, my Live View, which is a remote video encoder, lives in the side here. There's a hole cut in the bottom with some loom around it that keeps uh, the fan that's in here uh, blowing cool air. Uh, I typically use a GoPro for the IRL streams. Uh, that runs with HDMI out. Uh, this is a Hero 9. It has less issues than the Hero 10, believe it or not. And it's all bundled up with a nice piece of loom. Uh, that actually goes into the back, top of the backpack. 
and I keep a stick and I forgot to plug it back in but I have an extension cord so that what I can take with this female HDMI if I want to switch it over to the camcorder in the car because that is a better camera when I'm in the car live streaming I just pull this out this is always plugged into the stream encoder and then I plug this into the camera in the car but when I want to use the backpack I just plug it into the HDMI from the GoPro and I zip it back up and I've got about 10 feet of cable here that I can pull out if needed but I just turn everything on which I should have done before the stream so give me a second to boot everything up and then uh, we will go outside and uh, we'll do some questions and answers so we have the camera running what is it complaining about oh no so GoPro has uh GoPro has decided to uh, force a software update, so that's a problem. So I have to download the GoPro app real quick, so give me just a second. If you guys got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, though. But uh, the reason that this bag is so redundant is because it's got lots of different cell phone connections. It's very expensive. Um, but I put everything in a backpack because I can literally put this thing on and do IRL storm chasing. A lot of people storm chase. They stream with a phone, whatever. Guys, I did it. It just... I'm tired of the signal dropping is basically what it comes down to. Um, so that's why I went and, and built this. Uh, this is the same technology that uh, a lot of the uh, networks are using. I know a lot of storm chasers that use a live view, um, but they'll just like tether their phone to it. And I don't understand why, because uh, hotspot data on a phone is typically limited to like a thousand kilobits a second sometimes. So that's a problem. Uh, because our... Uh, our system here, we can push like seven or eight thousand kilobits a second um, most of the time. My favorite fast food, uh, Culver's. McDonald's sucks. My thoughts on Tuesday, I haven't looked. Uh, it's probably trash, just like everything else this year. But we might be surprised. The best way to get through a 10 hour drive, um, don't fall asleep at the wheel. That's probably my recommendation. I, I don't know. I don't know how I get through them. It gets harder every day. Uh, nobody got time for a signal drop. That's what I've been saying. Yeah, I have a feeling that... Uh, I have a feeling that uh, Tuesday is going to be junk too. Like none of these days are very good uh, storm chasing days, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, I apologize for the technical difficulty here. I didn't do my homework, and I forgot that I had a pending, a pending uh, software update on my GoPro. So it is making me, it is making me update my settings. So I will do this real quick. Am I going to chase this week? Yeah, but I don't think we're going to see much, to be totally honest with you. I have to pair my GoPro with the app. Um, ideally, what the hell? Ideally, there's actually a little Sony, it's an AX3000 or whatever, action camera that's really good. Um, but it's not supported anymore. So, that kind of sucks. So, I hope the software update is not a pain in the ass to do. And it seems to be letting me, uh, leaving me alone here. Okay, are we working? We are working. Hang on. Something's not right. Ta-da. Alright, folks. So when I hit this button, uh, we're going to have a temporary blackout here where my video is going to go down, so give me just a second here. You're going to have like 20 seconds where you're not going to see anything because uh, this camera actually goes to the streaming server and it will prioritize itself and it will actually knock this live stream down as it should. So give me just one second here. Uh, you're going to see probably a blank screen for just, just a minute.
when I fly. Coming online. Something. I don't know if on this or Go ahead and fix that. I think the uh, computer not dropping the stream is confusing everything here. So give me just a minute, guys. I understand there was some lag. Everybody freaked out. Just got to give me just a second, guys. It's not a big deal. We'll fix it here. Remember, we do this all uh, live in the field. This isn't that fake BS you see on other channels. So you're seeing it as we do it. to uh, go in and manually end my stream from my computer. But uh, anyway, folks, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. When I go outside here, I'll still try to uh, keep an eye on everything, if I can, using uh, my phone. Right now I'm just checking uh, some settings. The uh, problem is the server is using the, or my uh, my uh, backpack is using the same stream key as my computer is, and that's causing a conflict. And I forgot that I have to end my computer a certain way because I never live stream with my computer like ever. So I forgot that I had to end it a certain way so that it recognizes it as a new stream. So give me just a second here, folks. Um, I will bring the chat up on screen here. Looks like uh, the western target area is still winning in terms of uh, where everybody wants to see us go. Ditch that stream key. So let me see if I can get this to work real quick. It's definitely not the ideal way to be doing this. But uh, we are not edited here. So hold on one second here. Let me drop my uh, computer stream again and see if I can reboot what it's doing.
down and see if I'm doing. All right, guys, it looks like we might not be able to go uh, do anything tonight. I apologize for that. We're having some problems. Can't uh, can't really do a lot about it, so I'm sorry. Let me see if I can fix it again. The uh, problem, like I said, is not with our technology. The problem is with uh, just RTMP in general. I'm only able to assign one stream key, and it looks like uh, I have to do something here to get it to actually realize that the connection, the previous connection was dropped, which is my computer that I'm recording from now. And, uh, yeah, we don't, no reason to knock the technology, guys. It's, it works fine all the time. Like I said, the reason that, um, it doesn't, it's not working right now is because this is not its intended purpose. We did not build this unit, um, to sit here and switch back and forth between the computer and, uh, and the mobile application. Uh, nine times out of ten, we stream from the uh, the mobile application. So, like I said, I will try this one more time here. But you got to give me just uh, just one patient minute here to uh, to do so. It requires uh, my full attention here. So we got to put a bunch of passwords in to uh, try to knock the uh, old stream key out of here. really a massive pain in the ass. Okay, give me, uh, let me put the uh, back, be right back screen up for just one second. shot here. I uh, tried assigning a new stream key to the, uh, the backpack. Not sure if that's going to work or not. We'll give it a chance here. Just got to be a little patient. Don't really have any issues. Uh, I see the super chat there from Stephen. Thank you. Just got to be a little patient. Don't really have any really issues. issues. Uh, I see the super the, chat uh, there from Stephen. Thank you. And I don't stream. And yeah, not really issues. Uh, it's just we're using this for the uh, non-intended purpose. Like I said, I don't stream my, uh, my computer. Uh, from my so, uh, from my uh, from, uh, from my computer. computer is apparently causing an issue. So, here, so let me try to knock the stream down. Streaming from the computer is apparently causing an issue here. So let me try to knock the stream down one more time. Okay, so let's see. Let me test the audio. That's my leg. Stream down one more time. That is my leg. And it's working, right? Okay.
Okay, so please God be working. Let's hope this is working. Fingers crossed, folks. If it's not working, I'm probably gonna flip. So we gotta sit through my own ad here. Okay, excellent. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, climb up on my car and uh, show you everything we've got going on. So uh, this is our Cyclone port unit and this is our um, prototype uh, 360 uh, unit here. Uh, there's gonna be a cap on here that will hold the 360 camera, but I, I'm nixing that idea. What I wanna do is build off of this. I actually had uh, Ryan Hall's dad weld this plate on top of my J-pole mount. And uh, you can see here our new anemometer uh, is, a, is a conflict here with where the 360 camera normally sat with a magnet mount. So I think we're going to actually uh, utilize this, put some threaded rod through here, a piece of PVC pipe, run the threaded rod through the PVC pipe and then put a cap on it for the top. Um, this here is the cyclone port uh, unit. Uh, this thing is uh, what feeds all the weather data information into Radar Omega. Uh, there is actually a fan inside the top here and this draws air through here up and then out the bottom to get an accurate measurement when we're sitting still. And this right here is a really really nice pan tilt zoom camera. Um, this thing is, is awesome. Uh, this has night vision on it. Uh, it is not active at the moment uh, unless you know we're actually out chasing but uh, that right there is uh, that is our new pan tilt zoom camera. So because of the installation of this, we had to put the braces on, and uh, this thing is it's rock solid now. Uh, it's actually set up so that if we hit a power line again with it, it should just break off. Um, so we should be uh, we should be pretty good with that. Uh, this is uh, you're not going to see another mobile cyclone port unit with anything like this on it right now. Uh, we are definitely in beta test mode with this, so please understand if there's any issues with it at any point. Uh, I am the only mobile Cyclone port, other than I, th I think Don uh, might be using it, but I'm the only one that's going to be utilizing this. So uh, this doesn't have a full 360 because the, it's got a blind spot here because of the mount, um, so we can't point it forward, uh, but we can do everything but forward, and then we'll let the dash camera uh, do the rest there, and then uh, over there, those are uh, cellular antennas. So a lot of people are always asking too, like what the hell is in the back of the car? Well, not a whole lot. Well, actually a whole lot, but. So uh, these are shoes, but guys, I keep a lot of stuff in here. Uh, so we've got uh, rain gear, uh, BLS medical bag, an ALS medical bag. Um, I've got uh, tools in here. This is actually really disorganized right now because I'm reorganizing it, um, but. Uh, everything's got its place. I keep uh, some lights there uh, for when we're moving or doing uh, damage scenes at the middle of the night. Um, I've got a ton of flashlights, uh, chainsaw fuel. I carry a chainsaw. Um, lots of different items in here. So that's that's what's in the back. Uh, and I'm currently redoing all the tech over here. Um, so we've got a Nighthawk router, uh, which has an antenna unplugged. The Cyclone port unit's down there. So we've got a lot going on back here. I mean, not a whole lot. It's not a whole lot, but it's it's still a whole lot. I mean, to me, it's not a whole lot, but um, see, everybody's always asking about this car, and I don't understand why because it's really not that great. Oh, I need to show you these awesome tires. Uh, let me turn my flashlight on, guys. I just got these awesome tires. Check these out. Um, these things are uh, Michelin Cross Climate 2s, and these are like anybody that's into cars uh, really likes these tires. Uh, these things basically act like a winter tire, uh, even though they're in all season. And these things are awesome, and they've got full tread depth features, and they are not a sponsor. I'm just bragging about them. Um, so they're great for me because I run uh, so many miles on these tires that uh, 
And when the tread starts wearing down, a lot of times with normal tires, you will lose uh, grip and uh, hydroplaning performance because these tread features, these big sipes, uh, they don't go all the way through the tread. Um, but with these they do and there's actually not a whole lot of sipes. It's mostly these big uh, big tread blocks So these are actually awesome tires and uh, they're really expensive. They're about 270 bucks a tire But uh, these things are worth it. So I just switched from my Firestone uh, All weathers to uh, or weather readies whatever to uh, to these and uh, I'm really ooh, That's where that rattles coming from But I'm really happy with these so far But uh, that's the big thing with storm chasing. <sighs> Backpack's on, I forgot. See, a lot of people think that storm chasing is just uh, get in the car and go, but it, it's it's not. Um, you know, we need to be responsible as storm chasers and uh, have good tread on our tires, etc. My little light stopped working. There we go. Uh, so in here, and I'm going to do this kind of... Kind of sloppily here. Uh, everything's a little bit messy right now because I'm actually reorganizing things. But down here, I've actually got a, uh, a controller. This thing is awesome. This is a Jeep part. Anybody that's a Jeep fan, uh, you probably have seen one of these. Uh, these things are awesome. They've got like... Uh, like four 60 amp outputs and the rest are like 30. Um, so I run all my high amp um, switches on this and this is just a, a remote switch uh, that's mounted under the seats. So I uh, turn bumper light on, roof light, rear lights, side lights, inverter, and actually power the radios on. Uh, this thing is really nice because you don't have to run relays for everything. Um, so bumper, roof, uh, great unit. And then uh, my lighting and uh, uh, emergency equipment controller is a Phoenix 4200 Mini. Uh, there's a reason for that. I won't go into it, um, but I've got arrow functionalities. So, for example, the back of the light bar, we can do a left arrow, a center out, or a right uh, based on which direction we want to run the traffic. Uh, we can turn a steady burn on, and then we've got a amber rear-facing flashing, uh, so we can turn just the rear uh, amber lights on. Or we can turn the rear and front facing amber and white lights on. Lots of functionality. And then, of course, a laptop mount. This is where my laptop normally goes. It swings around. Uh, it expands. Uh, that plugs into my GPS puck up there. And that's what gives me radar. I use Radar Omega and Gibson Ridge softwares. Uh, and it works, uh, it works excellent. I'm just looking at the chat here real quick. Uh, this up here, this is actually my, uh, I'm trying to do this with, cause the camera is mounted to the, the like backpack strap. So I'm trying, trying to do this. Uh, this up here is actually a film tools. This is a camera mount. Normally you'll see these things suction cupped to a window, which I can do, but this is actually bolted directly into, uh, the support above the windshield. It's a little bit more solid. So I can put my GoPro on that, or I can put the, uh, the camera on that. And then, uh, it articulates and gives us a nice, uh, a nice view. So I think actually for the heck of it, uh, we're going to go down and get some gas. Yep, copyright. So I think let's go get some gas and uh, we'll end the stream after that. But yeah, I'm a big, I'm actually a Phoenix dealer, Tim. Uh, big fan of uh, Phoenix. I'm just uh, checking the chat real quick. Oh, my check engine light turned off. That's cool. Yeah, I agree about the lights. Uh, the more I lose concentration. That's why, so... Uh, and I'm not trying to knock storm chasers, guys, but a lot of storm chasers put a bunch of these lights all over their vehicle and it doesn't work well. So I'm actually... Here, let me... Uh, let me show you guys what I've got. I, I won't turn them on because uh, I don't want to piss off all my neighbors, but um, let me show you. Um, I'm a stickler with lights. So let me actually just turn a couple of these on for... Uh... So typically when you're doing... So I used to build uh, police cars and ambulances and stuff. 
for a company in Madison. So when you've got lights to make them most or the least is distracting, uh, you want to have them synced. And anybody that's been in fire services knows this. But so this uh, this Phoenix bar, this bar down here, has a white flood override. Uh, so right now it's in flood override. It's not flashing, so it, it doubles as another light. And then those are just the takedowns on the bar. Uh, so the way that this is actually set up is the two lights here on on the hood. Uh, these are white and amber. Those are actually in sync with the bar. Uh, so when the right or the passenger side of the bar flashes, the driver's side uh, hood mount light flashes. So it's an X pattern. So it's a lot less distracting. And then this, uh, this stick is just a white, uh, an amber white mix and it's all over the place. Um, the rear of the bar actually is in sync. The rear bar up there is in sync with the two license plate mount lights. And these are Phoenix quads. Uh, so these are red, blue, white, amber, whatever you need them to be, which is nice because these are actually brake light activated. So, hey, come down here for a minute. So we're gonna advertise for a second because I am a Phoenix dealer. So if you wanna buy some lights, let me know. Uh, I've actually got hideaways in here as well. So there's actually uh, white, uh, strobe, well, strobe effect, but they're LEDs in the tail lights. And those are on just a, a, double, uh, a double flash. Um, per unit. So the back of the bar and these, uh, these are synced. So when the, the left half of the bar is flashing, the left uh, light, uh, left surface mounts flashing. When the right's flashing, the right surface mounts flashing. It's a lot less distracting for other drivers. Um, and, and I agree with that because if you just have a big ball of light, um, that that's a big problem. It's not safe. Go step on the brakes. So these lights, like I said, they double as um, emergency lighting, but when she steps on the brakes, they should light up red. There you go. So we've got a ton of brake lighting here so people won't rear end me. Uh, hit the, uh, the middle button on the right passenger side of the green controller, the middle button. Yep. Okay, so put your foot on the brake. Uh-oh. Take your foot off. I don't have these. My switch is broke. Okay, so uh, these are actually supposed to be in sync with the bar, back of the bar, but they're not. Uh, there is a mercury switch in the back hatch. So when I lift up the back hatch, it will actually shut those two lights off. Um, so they're not just, uh, they're not just, you know, shining all over the place. Uh, I don't have the, uh, the white flashing in the rear activated in mode two, um, but those are supposed to actually be in sync with that back half of the bar up there, which actually they are. So. Uh, step on the brakes again. So then they override to red when you hit the brakes. So it's pretty clear that uh, we're stopping. You stay on the brakes for a minute. So the whole advantage of this is if somebody's behind us and we're stopped on the side of the road, you put your brakes on, now it's very noticeable uh, that the vehicle is stopping. Um, but having everything in sync with the back of the bar, uh, that gives us uh, less blur and less, uh, uh, less sharp edges of the light uh, so it doesn't blind people. Um, and I'll show you what the front does in this mode. Okay, so you can take your foot, you keep your foot on and then turn the bumper off, bumper light. So the front of this, when this is in mode two, so this is, this is what I like about Phoenix. So we've got no front flashing at all happening right here, except for this bar here. And if we actually back up the, the front light stick bar, uh, it's hard to tell on camera because of the frame rate, but this thing's actually pulsing, so it's never off. Um, but that thing is always flashing. Uh, you can see a little bit of a flash pattern happening in it. Like I said, the camera doesn't pick it up too well. But Phoenix has this awesome variable intensity mode where it actually dims, instead of turning off the lights that aren't flashing, it actually dims them down to 50%. So at night, that's a lot easier on your eyes. So if we're driving and we still want to be somewhat seen from the front with the rear flashing on, we can actually turn that on and we're not blinding everybody. But like I said, it's, it's it's tough. I should have had her turn the takedowns off. Uh, we're actually going to be replacing this bar up here. Okay, you can shut everything off. Just hit the power button on the green controller in the middle. Yep. So that's all I needed. So what we're going to be replacing is this top top bar that's going to be replaced with the Phoenix quad bar, and that's got the variable intensity. So we'll be able to run those uh, those low, uh, those less jarring flash patterns more because that's a problem that a lot of people don't understand uh, happens with emergency vehicles is uh, blinding of other drivers. So if we can keep the lights in sync left to right, um, it's a lot less blinding. And then we also want to be able to dim them at night. So the front bar 
is actually on a photo sensor, kind of like automatic headlights, and so are these, and so is the roof bar. Uh, it actually, they, when it's dark out, it dims the lights so that they don't blind everybody. It dims them to about 75%, and that's a photo sensor in the dash, just like your automatic headlights, so that keeps uh, everything from uh, being too uh, in your face. All right, I'm gonna go put gas in this. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna go get gas. So that's uh, so that's that, folks. That's my uh, that's my spiel. So uh, you're gonna get to, you get to see the the cockpit view here. Check engine light's gonna come on for an O2 sensor here, so just stand by. We'll uh, we'll let Bob take care of that next time I'm down there. It's just an O2 sensor though; we don't need them. But uh, the camera quality is gonna be terrible because this GoPro is awful at night, and I'm not hooking it up to my main camcorder, so just bear with me. So the gas station's uh, just down here. But uh, there's a loose hubcap on the front wheel that I found and it is really bothering me. Every time I hit a bump, it rattles. And I was trying to figure out what this rattling was for like the past week. And I found it when I was out there banging on that tire. So I need to, uh, either get a new uh, little hub center cap or figure out why that's rattling. Those uh, cheap little metal caps are, are junk. Um, it's probably just loose, but I need to fix that because every time I hit, a, I hit a bump, it sounds like somebody's beating on a tin trash can, like it's terrible. So welcome to my town, you're not missing much. But uh, no, this is a this is a great vehicle. Uh, I take uh, really good care of this thing because it's got to last. We've got guys, we've got two hundred and twenty-one thousand four hundred and eighty-three miles on this thing, and there's the proof right there. And uh, thanks to Bob down there in Carrollton, Georgia, we're gonna have uh, a lot more miles out of it. Knock on wood, well, they don't hit a deer or something. Fun fact, I hit a deer in this once already. But uh, no, this. The thing is, it's, it's all about how you maintain a vehicle. I've put almost 55,000 miles on this car since uh, the end of April. Uh, I've put a lot of miles on this thing. So it doesn't make sense for me to go buy a brand new car because it'll depreciate in value so quickly. So um, here's the deal. When the motor starts getting low compression from use or it starts getting tired or it just starts uh, having problems, I'll just put a new motor in it. Call up Bob. Tell him I want to put a reman motor in it or something. And then we'll have a kind of like a brand new car again. But these Ford Explorers had some problems with transmissions, uh, which uh, we found out. Door ajar, okay. Yeah, so transmission, the PTU is a problem. I probably should have told Bob to put a new PTU in it for the hell of it, but that's not that big of a deal. Sometimes these PTUs had problems, water pump problems, um, but other than that, they're pretty solid. Uh, they're good cars. Uh, relatively cheap to fix. Um, but overall, I, I do like them. Uh, you can you can dog on them pretty well if you need to. And uh, we're going to come down here and put E25 in here because this is a, an E85 vehicle. I don't like to run E85, but uh, we're going to put E25 in it. Okay, you guys are witnessing this. Pushing the unlock button, and I am taking the key. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Ford Explorer, like the, especially the newer ones, they had some issues. Um, if you're gonna keep the vehicle for a long time, it's not such a big deal because you know you just fix those problems and every vehicle has problems. But some of them, I mean, man, just uh, stupid problems. Still getting used to the uh, gas filler being on the passenger side. 
three dollars and five cents. Yeah, I think we actually did put a newer. Uh, I think we did put a newer transmission, and I think this came off a little bit of a newer car. But uh, this is a 2015, and uh, 2013 and 2000 Ford Explorers are pieces of crap. Trust me, I've owned several. I've owned a 2018, I've owned a 2013, and now I got this 15. And let me tell you, the 2013s are piles of junk. Uh, everything goes wrong with them. The uh, uh, water pumps go on them at about 70,000 miles, and it's an expensive ass fix because it's an internal water pump. Now the water pump goes on all of these at some point because it is a water pump. And uh, this is America and we build cheap cars, but you get the point, but those 2013s just seem to be crap. Problems with the all wheel drive every five minutes. But this is a, uh, a 15 when they started to fix uh, some of their problems. Uh, the 14s are kind of junk too. Uh, I used to work for a company that had a whole fleet of these uh, police cars. And uh, trust me, uh, doing a water pump in these sucks internal chain driven water pump which is just stupid a lot of people blow their motors up because they don't realize the water pumps failing but trust me there's a lot of signs uh, aka coolant in your oil a lot of people think it's a blown head gasket a friend of mine had one of these replaced a head gasket it wasn't the head gasket it was a water pump could have told him that I do not have a windshield wiper on the back. This is a rare windshield wiper delete modification. Uh, it fell off in a hailstorm. I don't know if it was a product of the hail or if it just so happened, but it did fall off in that hailstorm in Colorado when I busted out the windshield. Um, really need to replace that. In fact, that's actually when I lost this window shield thing and i did this the hail did that and i need to get that fixed coincidentally in that hail storm i also lost this this piece so i need to get new window deflectors uh, it's almost a must-have as a storm chaser so you can crack your windows but a lot of people ask you know why the hell do you have a black bumper well let me tell you it's because a deer decided to run into me in the middle of the night in iowa and i got so lucky because that deer hit me right here and by the sound of it i when i got out i expected to see the whole front end crushed i expected the radiator to be hit laying on the ground i expected total destruction but the only thing that was busted was actually the lower bumper cover because it's actually two pieces but i had to buy it all as one unit so that's that's why the bumper's black just haven't had it rewrapped just haven't had time where did i put the key damn it oh i clipped it to my pants where it's supposed to be did the deer live uh no definitely not rest in peace deer So we're going to head back home, and uh, I want to thank everybody for watching the stream. It's uh, It's been fun, but uh, I'm going to get to bed because, like I said, we're going to have to wake up tomorrow and most likely drive to, I'm thinking it's, it's looking like Nebraska. Nebraska or northern Kansas for uh, a possible storm chase. There's not going to be much to chase, but we could see uh, maybe some, some photogenic uh, kind of transient supercell-like structures. I could use a keyless, I could just use a, like a million spare keys, but I still lose them all. About every two or three weeks I have to go and get a new spare key cut. But I apologize for the video quality, folks. The, uh, this GoPro does terrible in low light, and I could switch it over to the camcorder, but um, it, uh, it's just a lot of work for what it is.
uh, this is an awesome, uh, awesome vehicle for what it is. The horns, the horns messed up though. It sounds like crap. Really need to replace that. I think the uh, the horn is uh, horn has had it. So I need to replace the horn. Actually, uh, Paul sent uh, an air horn, like a legit air horn with an actual air tank and a compressor. And I need to get that put in there. Uh, there's actually room for it in this car, so I need to get it installed. There's actually quite a bit of room in that uh, front bumper. But yeah, this horn's actually not very safe because you nobody pays attention or hears that so I gotta I gotta fix that like I said I will see you all guys all tomorrow We will have a, uh, a live stream if there's storms or not. Even if there's not storms, we'll still fire it up and, and do something. God, I don't know if I got enough room to park there with the... Hmm. I don't know whose car this is. Oh, our lovely neighbors are coming outside. Great, I'm sure they'll have a comment. We've got some really, really bad neighbors. Like they're constantly screaming and yelling at each other and it just gets old. Oh, there they go. Put a muffler on there, man. But, uh, thanks for watching everybody, I appreciate it. Okay, good, we are still working. So thanks again for watching, everybody. Um, it's been fun. I wanted to do a little thing. I'm gonna try to live stream every day. Uh, I think I'm gonna make a goal to live stream every single day just for the fun of it, even if it's only for a couple of minutes talking about the weather. If you've got suggestions for live streaming or whatever, you can go to our website, seethestorm.com. Hang on, I'm trying to give you a visual here as well. Go to seethestorm.com. You can see all sorts of things. Uh, shop our store, become a YouTube member, download Radar Omega, watch my YouTube stuff, join our Discord, our website, or you can contact us. And here's where you would type in your message and tell me how much you think I suck or how much you think I don't suck. And it will go right to my phone and my phone will make a noise and I will check my phone and I will see if you think I suck or what. Or if you just have a suggestion. So take care, everybody. Have a great night. And uh, I will see you all uh, all tomorrow here at, at some point. Whether we are doing an actual live stream or a storm chase, I don't know. Uh, time will tell. Have a good night. I have to figure out how to...